I want to call California this morning and talk with uh, a gal I know you've heard before. Uh, I'm just going to let you do a little singing here for the... For the one I love to find me today. Just whistle while you work. How are you today? This is Adriana Casalotti, Snow White. <laughs> Hey, Adriana, good morning. Good morning. You know it's 75 degrees out here today. Oh, it's cold here in the Midwest. I'm calling from Bloomington, Illinois. Oh, but it's beautiful out there, too. I, I was in um, uh, Chicago for a long time, oh, in 1938, <laughs> long, long ago. <laughs> I'm trying to think. That was, uh, well, were you living in Chicago when you did Snow White? No, I, I was working there at the Sherman House. I see. What it Singing, singing at the Sherman House. After after Snow White was released, they sent me to Chicago to perform there. At, I don't know what they called it. The Sher they called it something else. Then it was changed to the Sherman House and something else. You know the hotel I mean? Yeah, I do. Um, the Sherman House, I th is it still open or not? Oh, wait, maybe they tore that one down. <laughs> it's, a, it's a name that rings a bell for... An, for if the, uh, the College Inn. That was, that was the nightclub in 1938, and I still have the menu with my picture on it, and anybody could go in for $3.00 and have the nightclub show, a full dinner, and, and I think a free drink on top of it all. <laughs> I, I have to ask you this, Adriana. When you got the job of, uh, of Snow White, were you a singer before that then? No, no. I, I was uh, just a little student of my father's. Uh, he was a, an operatic singing teacher here in Los Angeles, and one day one of the Disney representatives called him and asked him if he knew of a little girl who could sing and speak as a child and yet have some sort of a, 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 um, training of opera so that it, she would be able to sing several high notes. And I was listening in on the extension phone upstairs, and I said, Papa, how about me? <laughs> And I went on up and down, and he said, well, get off the phone, Adriana. And the man said, no, send her down. Maybe she'll be okay. Who knows? So I went down, and I was the first one tested. And then they tried another 149, and they called me back and said, let's hear you once more. And I did it again, and they said, okay, you're it. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. An interesting story how some of the folks got associated with Disney. I think Clarence Nash was working in Chautauqua. Yes, he was. I, wasn't he a milkman? I don't know, but he did what he called an impression of his little pet sheep, right? I, I, well, see, I don't really know that. And f funny, I've talked to Ducky so many times, and I always forget to ask him just how that happened. Yeah, I think it was originally a, a sheep that his voice was used for in his own mind, and then the, the Disney folks heard it, or Walt heard it, and said, hey, that'd be great for Donald Duck. Oh. See, well, that's something I didn't know yet. Uh -huh. So even you call him Ducky Nash, right? I call him Ducky, yes. He and I traveled around a lot for Disney after the uh, picture was released um, to publicize any new films that might uh, be coming out, be released by Disney, like The Song of the South and that sort of thing. You know, you probably worked with Jim McDonald, too. You know, I probably did. Um, I'm terrible with names, but I probably did if it was at my time, you know, if it was the time... Yeah. I he worked talking about many years ago. You know, I'm 65. I will be 65 in May 6th. Oh, we're not going to tell anybody that. I don't care. <laughs> Jim McDonald was their head. Jim McDonald was their head sound effects man for years, and he played in the uh, jug band for Snow White. Oh, well, then I must have known him. Yeah, but there were so many people involved in the film those days, right? Oh yes, right. There were so very many too. Uh huh. I'm Wishing was the song that, uh, well, in fact, Snow White happens to be one of my all-time favorite cartoons. Oh. And, um, boy, just, just to hear your voice all of a sudden, I feel like you're an old friend. Please don't run away. I won't hurt you. I'm awfully sorry. I didn't mean to frighten you, but you don't know what I've been through, and all because I was afraid. I'm so ashamed of the fuss I've made. What do you do when things go wrong? Oh, you sing a song. <laughs> <There>. <laughs> yeah, they used your laugh, too, and everything, didn't they? Yes, I think so. <laughs> yeah. I understand even when it came down to uh, uh, cartooning, what they, they would do what they would call a rotoscope for even, like, dance numbers and things to get the flows of the skirts and all of that kind of thing when they... Well, they did, but I didn't do the dancing part. That was done by um, a Marjorie Belcher, who was later known as Marge Champion. Really? Yes. As of in Marge and Gower Champion. Marge Gower Champion, that's correct. Yeah. And she was 16, and I was about uh, 18 or 19 at that time. But they did use something else. They used your mouth, didn't they? They, they photographed me when I was singing, mostly. And um, let's see, when I remember one sequence where the witch looked into the window and said, 
baking pies, my pet? And then she hands me this apple. She said, this apple's made, uh, pie's made from apples like layers, you know, that, the, that makes the men, I forgot how it goes, that, that makes the men's mouths water or something like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, they photographed me then, and while I was doing whistle while you work, I was using the broom and the whole bed. There were several sequences where they did photograph me. Yeah, because you, you were sweeping out the front stoop of the house and stuff. Uh, that's right. And that, now you'll see, if you look closely, when I'm singing Someday My Prince Will Come, of course, you don't know what I look like because I'm really never seen, but um, uh, it looks just like me, uh, the eye expressions and all, for Someday My Prince Will Come. Now, how old were you when that was made? Um, from the ages of 19 to 21. It took three years, but I only worked on it whenever they need me, and I got $20 a day, so I totaled $975 for the film. But I don't regret it. I've had such a lot of fun since then. It was well, worth it. Believe. I wonder how much the Disney Studios have made with Snow White. Well, I, I got a call from British Broadcasting about um, three weeks ago, and this is now 43 uh, years later, isn't it? And uh, uh, the man told me, now let me see if I've got this right. I, I, I may be not quite exact on it, but I think he said to me that in three weeks, now it was just shown again in um, London, it grossed one million pounds. So that would be about uh, two million dollars, roughly. A little over, uh, isn't it? Two point something, two point four three or something. I don't watch it, but yeah. So now that's not bad after forty three years. <laughs> well, it was done so so well. Yes, I guess it was, but it's so, such such an unusual situation. It, it it could not be dated. I imagine this will go on forever if they can keep uh, uh, reprinting this old film. Yeah. Uh, wasn't that uh, wasn't that the Disney Studios' first full length animated feature? Yeah. Definitely. I didn't even know it was a full-length feature animation. I thought it was uh, an animated feature. I thought it was simply going to be one of those little shorts, a 10-minute short. I didn't even know what I was doing when I was working on it. <laughs> yeah. I was just a punk kid. Adrienne, did, did you ever... Uh, it's Adriana, right? Yes, Adriana. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you ever do any other uh, voices and things? No, I like to kid around like a little kid sometimes, you know. What's your name? Uh, Kim. Kim. Hello, Kim. I, my name is Adriana Kim, and my mommy is... You're right, and she told me to give you her love, and now I'm going to put Mommy back on the phone. Mommy! Kim down the phone, she wants to talk to you. I do little girl voices, too, but that I... Is, even... That is outstanding. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that is terrific. <laughs> I like to kid her up. Good heavens, you are 64 or 5. Yeah, I'll be 65 in May, yeah. Oh, and you're doing... <laughs> she sounds like she's about 3 or 4. If I can do, I'm wishing like I don't even. I never try with like a five-year-old. I'm wishing for one I love to find me today. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if Shirley Temple Black could do it again. <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, listen. It's it's just a pleasure to to work with you. Oh, thank you. That was so nice of you to call me. I appreciate that, and I I wish you a very happy new year. Well, hey, listen. The same to you, Adriana. Thank and uh, you. I had never imagined that I'd be able to talk with uh, with Snow White. Oh well, it's a pleasure to speak with you, Kim. You're a very nice fellow. Do you ever? Can I ask you to sing one little more? One little thing more? Either I'm wishing, or I don't know. Whistle while you work. Whistle while you work. And cheerfully together you can tidy up the place. Just hum a merry tune. It won't take long when there's a song to help you set the pace. And as you sweep the room, imagine that the room is someone that you love. And soon you'll find you're dancing to the tune. Just whistle while you work. When hearts are high, the time will fly. So whistle while you work. There, and they lived happily ever after. <laughs> and I'm glad, too. Thank you. <laughs> Adriana, thank you.